Uh, I'm, I'm Vince Fitkowski. I'm chair of the Society's International and National Secur Security Law Practice Group. Welcome. Thanks for sharing your time with us. We have a distinguished panel and a distinguished moderator. And I'll simply introduce the, the moderator. Brett Stevens is a familiar face to uh, many of you. You see his etchings e every week in the Wall Street Journal Global View column or uh, <coughs> on the Journal Editorial Report on TV. Uh, Brett is the weekly columnist on foreign affairs for the journal. He's uh, a, a deputy editorial page editor with oversight uh, on the opinion sections of the journal's European and Asian editions and a member of the editorial board. Uh, he spent most of his career at the journal, except for a period of time in which he was editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Post, uh, uh, which he assumed at age 28. Uh, he's been named a young global leader by the World Economic Forum and was recently identified by Atlantic Monthly as one of the most influential political commentators in the U.S. So with that, Brett, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for the... Uh The extremely uh, generous uh, introduction, Vince, um, half of it is true. Uh, the uh, subject of our panel today is international law agreements uh, between sovereigns or uh, world uh, governments. And uh, uh, we have a very uh, distinguished uh, panel to my left here, um, so distinguished, in fact, that I'm going to keep their uh, I'm going to mention their credentials very briefly because otherwise we would spend the entire 90 minutes uh, uh, reviewing them. Uh, uh, in a speech, uh, I think in April, in uh, Puerto Rico, um, uh, Justice Sotomayor, who was then, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, who was then not yet, had not yet been uh, either nominated or confirmed as an associate justice, uh, spoke to some of the issues that are before our panel today. Uh, she said that international law and foreign law will be very important in the discussion of how to think about unsettled issues in our own legal system, that to discourage the use of foreign law would be, as she put it, asking American judges to close their minds to good ideas, and that foreign cases, she said, help us understand what the concepts uh, mean to uh, other countries and whether our understanding of our constitutional rights falls into the mainstream of human thinking. Now, as a something of a uh, counterpoint to uh, the most recent uh, Associate Justice's view is the one that was offered by Judge uh, uh, Scalia in his dissent in Roper versus uh, Simmons, where he said, the court should either profess its willingness to reconsider uh, uh, all these matters, the matters in question in that case were um, the execution of uh, uh, minors uh, in, light of the views of, uh, in light of the views of foreigners, or it should cease putting forth foreigners' views as part of, a, of the reasoned basis for its uh, decision. Uh, to, in, uh, to insert alien law when it agrees with one's, um, uh, one's own thinking and ignore it Otherwise, is not reasoned decision making, but sophistry. So the um, uh, this this I think between these two polls, we are going to have a basis for a very uh, interesting conversation. The reach of uh, international law and international opinion in American jurisprudence uh, uh, has a relatively uh, long uh, history. Uh, uh, but it has become, I think, a more salient issue uh, in the last uh, few years, and it has become particularly so as uh, transnational issues affecting international law, human rights law, environmental law, the law of the sea, and so forth, uh, become uh, uh, gain a, a greater uh, place in our in our thinking about what makes for uh, sound coherent and just <coughs> legal institutions. Now, uh, let me, as I promised, give you the, um, the very short course in who our uh, panel is, and I will introduce them in the order uh, in which they will uh, speak. Uh, to my immediate left is uh, uh, Francois-Henri uh, Briard, 
whose uh, uh, resume runs to, I think, several dozen pages, but um, he's insisted that I only mention two things. Um, he is uh, a member of the uh, Supreme uh, Court Bar for, uh, uh, in, in France and the, uh, the head of the Federalist Society in Paris. To his immediate left is my friend Brian Hook, who until recently was the Assistant Secretary of State for International Institutions. Laura Council, uh, excuse me, Laura Olson, uh, uh, to Brian's left is the Senior Counsel uh, for the uh, Constitution Project and spent um, many uh, years as a senior legal advisor uh, with the uh, ICRC, the International Committee for the Red Cross. Jeremy Rapkin was for 27 years a distinguished professor of government at uh, Cornell uh, University. Now he is uh, with uh, at George Mason. Um, he is the author of books with titles uh, such as Why Sovereignty Matters and The Case for Sovereignty. He um, makes, um, uh, there's no mystery about where uh, uh, Jeremy's views uh, uh, lie. And um, Ona Hathaway is a professor of law at the Yale uh, Law School, uh, which is also where she received her law degree. She's been associated with Harvard's Carr Center. She was uh, a law clerk for Justice uh, Sandra Day O'Connor, and she also has a very um, long and distinguished list of um, published uh, articles on the subject of international law. Um, we uh, previously agreed that we would keep our introductory um, comments, uh, uh, we would make them fairly briefly, <laughs> between five, six, maybe seven minutes. Uh, then we'll open it up for a discussion, and as soon as I can, I'm going to open it up to the audience uh, so that we can have the most uh, uh, productive and um, interactive conversation. So thank you all for coming, and uh, Mr. Briard, I'd like to start with you.